M-A. You're probably thinking, what does that mean? Two Matts and Anthony. Yeah, we got my brother, our brother, Officer Matt Herrick with us, joining us on Game Changers, police officer, law enforcement. We back the blue on Game Changers. That's right. Bro, I'm so happy you're on our show today, man. I'm happy to be here. First of all, I want to thank um, Pastors Hank and Brenda Kuhneman. They're like parents to me. Matt, you're one of my best friends. Anthony as well. It's a huge honor to be here on Game Changers. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, and I just got to say, like, Johnny and I knew you, like, years <laughs> before you were even at LOH. Um, little short story. Um, he is, let's just say, a decade older than me. Sorry. Am um, I? I mean, are we going to lie on Game Changers, bro? <laughs> like, you know, let's tell the truth at and about age, our age, right? At a certain age, you stop counting numbers, just so you <laughs> yeah. know. You don't count birthdays anymore at a certain age. Yeah, right. So, no, he, uh, he's, he's older than me, obviously, but uh, um, we played football together, actually, um, semi-pro, and uh, enjoyed playing uh, on the same team. You were an outside linebacker, defensive yes. end. I was the quarterback. So uh, we used to have some trash talk in practice, although you were never allowed to hit me because I was the starter, so right. they didn't let you hit me. Actually, really, no quarterback was allowed to get hit. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my joke is um, he has a easier time chasing criminals than he did me as the quarterback because – I mean, he's blessed to have his ankles today with how much that uh, wow. he was uh, faked out and juked out, you know. But there were many times where uh, he definitely would have probably drilled me in practice. And uh, I don't know. We, we talked trash a ton, man. Like, we really, like, <laughs> we had a few times, like, I did not want to have to wear those practice jerseys or anything. And I just wish I could have lowered my shoulder into Herrick and, like, taken his hit like there were so many times we absolutely got under each other's skin <laughs> like it was bad like I'm just telling you right now it was bad you put two mats in the same room the same practice field two same mats. church whatever it might be messy so you know that's why I mean MMA that's what this show is you got three opinionated guys on this show and uh, we're excited because actually on that topic we're gonna be going back to our series today fixing the 21st century America Matt Herrick and so you know, thank you again for being here. And, you know, on a serious note, you know, we back the blue, Herrick. Right. We 100% back the blue. I mean, Anthony, you can attest to this. Absolutely. You know, I, I'm, I'm so tired of hearing that stupid defund the police stuff. And frankly, it's, it's a bunch of tarnation as far as I'm concerned. Well, so, you know what? We might as <laughs> well just rip the Band-Aid off and just, go right in. Just go in, man. Listen, you know? listen, as a black man, let me just tell you, I have not had a single issue with police officers. So there's breaking the trend right there. So, you know, this whole narrative that has been spun since 2020 is ridiculous. And honestly, I'm just honored to have Officer Herrick on because, you know, we want to be able to hear things from his side of things. Yes. What's it like to be a police officer? Because you're talking about someone who literally has taken the oath to protect the community and there's always that chance that he might not come home. And mm -hmm. to me, that is, is, that's a testament to your bravery and just how much you actually care about society, not about one particular race, but about the country, the city, mm -hmm. the state as a whole. Yeah. And I think we need to honor that, so I'm glad to have him on today. Well, yeah, and you guys have kind of been framed as like, oh, well, you guys hate certain races, and you guys right. don't like, you know, black people, African-Americans, or you're not a fan of Hispanic people, or this, that, and the other. Speak on that as a police officer. And guys, like, I want you to understand, like, you are hearing this from somebody who does this every single day, okay? Like, you gotta understand, like, I knew him in the football world, and I know him in the cop world. I know his integrity as a man of God. I know how much he cares about my parents, the protection of this church, the protection of people around this church. And that's important. You're not just hearing this from some, you know, person on the streets. No, like, he, yes, he's a cop, but like, he's a man of God cop. And I want you to understand, like, he gets it both in the police world and he gets it in the spiritual world. And that is the greatest combination, I think, that you can have. So I want you to speak on that. Well, first and foremost, um, I'm a born again Christian. Yeah. I'm a tongue talking man. Yeah. I tithe at this church. Um, so all praise goes to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. first and foremost. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have hate in my body. I don't care what race you are. Mm -hmm. I don't care what your beliefs are. Yeah. Um, and that's because of Jesus Christ. I'm pretty sure Jesus Christ is not a white male, if I'm not mistaken. He teaches us to love one another. 
Um, so you unload a lot right there, Matt. It's strange times to be a cop now. I've been a cop for almost 16 years, and there's been a dramatic change. Um, it can be scary at times. And every day I leave my wife and my son to go work. Yes. Uh, I don't know if it's my last time with my son, my last phone call with my wife. Um, but at the same time, the oath you said, I took an oath to join the Army at 19. Mm -hmm. I took this oath at the age of 24, 25 for the same reason. Um, every, I don't know one racist police officer. I don't know one sexist police officer. Mm -hmm. I don't know one police officer who is against uh, homosexuals. I don't know any of them. Um, the last thing on my mind when I go to your house is what do you look like mm -hmm. and what do you believe in? Mm -hmm. I believe in God. I believe in my constitution. Mm -hmm. I believe what's doing right. That's yeah, good. yeah. And I mean, to address that, I mean, we were talking a little bit before the show, the three of us, and, you know, we were discussing some things too on like, no matter the situation, like race like sketchiness has no race correct and as a cop right. you don't know what situation you're getting into what the race is you don't care about that no. you care about the situation and you address the situation right right i think that's important to understand like he's not going into a situation like well let's see what race they are no you're going into a situation like let's identify the situation right. let's see i mean most situations i would say for you as a cop I mean, you could put a percentage on it, like on a scale of one to 10, uh, how many are honestly sketchy? And honestly, like you can't put race on sketch. No, no. It's a no. situation. Most of our contacts, people forget this. If we go to a call, it could be all sorts of things. Yeah. A, an assault call, a burglary, a, a child sexual assault. We go to calls and deal with people at their worst moment and their worst day. I, like again, I don't walk into a house and say, I'm gonna treat you differently because you're white or you're Hispanic or you're, you're black. I don't care and cops don't care because cops, it is a melting pot of cultures. Mm -hmm. Just like in the military, in my platoon, we, there were Catholics and Buddhists and Christians and whites and blacks, Hispanics. The same way with police work, the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I will stress it again. I don't know one racist police officer not one. We have white cops who work in North Omaha, Hispanic cops up there. We have black cops who work in South Omaha. We address people the same way. And I, honestly, and I can't see what race you are in a car. I'm behind you, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I'm behind your vehicle. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we treat, I shouldn't say we, I and all my friends treat everyone the exact same way. And that comes from my faith in God and Jesus Christ and my sermons from Pastor Hank Kuhneman and Brenda Kuhneman. Mm -hmm. You want to see multicultural, come to this church. Amen. That's true. That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. And who are you going to see working here? Police officers of all walks of life, of all races and all sexes. Yeah. And I mean, I, I want to like, give Anthony a chance sure. to speak on this too. But, you know, I think that's important because I'm sure when you deal with different crime, you could probably argue. I mean, it should be a, 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 easily a fact that you've probably dealt with same amount, equal crime on every single race. Yes. There's not like one race that, oh, I've had to arrest more people with this or more people with that. No, it's like, it, it, it's probably equal. Right. I'm guaranteed it because again, pastor preaches about it. It's about the human heart guys, right. you know, and you see that as a cop. So go ahead, Anthony. You actually just kind of stole my question because I was going to ask you this. <clears throat> Matt was, uh, this Matt. Uh, was that? <laughs> officer, officer Matt, yes. Yeah, officer Matt was, uh, okay, so I was reading their statistic that said that homicide rates are up like 29% and violence overall in the U.S. is up, I think it was double ditched, like 11% since 2016, and then it's escalated since the shenanigans in 2020. Right. Kind of what Matt was saying here was, from your perspective, what is it? about people that is spurring this surge in violence and, you know, just an outright mm -hmm. disregard for human life. It, it's one thing, and that's lack of God in your life. The moral compass for America has shifted. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have gotten away from God. If people fell in love with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, watch where we would be. It would be amazing. 
Mm-hmm. It would be absolutely amazing. And it hurts my heart as a Christian to see this happen. But also you go back to the popular phrase of defund the police. Yes. Look at the cities now who said that. And what are they doing? They, they burn for months and they're begging for cops now. You need police officers to keep people safe. Yes. And it, it's proven in those cities. Right? Yes. I don't care if you're Democratic. I don't care if you're Republican. I don't care if your state's red or blue or purple. You need law enforcement there to keep people safe. It's, it's, yeah. uh, it is common sense. Fact. But if yeah. you get back, if you get God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit back in your lives and back in your towns and back in your schools and back in your families, watch what would happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I look at it too. Like, Jesus had quote-unquote bodyguards. He did. I mean, he had, I mean, Peter had a sword. I mean, you look in the garden when they came to arrest Jesus, right? Like, he had people around him that had his back. Right. But yet we have people that think, oh, well, let's defund the police. Like, what a dumb thing to say. I mean, that's just pure ignorance. So, Officer Matt, how can we fix, in the, in the 21st century America, that statement? How can we get people to shift from saying, okay, we don't need to defund the police. We need to fund the police. We need to get behind the blue. How can we shift people's minds that have been saying that absolute stupid statement to, I mean, obviously, you know, the cliche answer is we need to get people more close to God, things like that. But I'm saying from a natural perspective, with law, with logistics, how can we fix that? From a worldly point of view, I would say, not to get too political, watch who you vote for. Mm -hmm. That's good. There are ramifications for that. Watch who you vote for. It trickles down. And then secondly, um, one of my favorite things about being a cop, I love it. I love when people come up to me. I don't care, like, yeah. if it's a kid, yeah. or and, and hug me and ask me questions, that's fine. A- approach the cops. Man, these people, these people, police officers, there's a heart behind the badge. Mm-hmm. That is someone's dad, that's someone's mom, yes. and sister, and brother, Amen. you know? That's really good. Talk to them. Mm-hmm. As, you ask me all the time, how are cops today? What can we do more? Yeah. It's a two-way street. Yeah. We'll offer you advice. Yeah. Give, give me advice. How can I help a younger generation, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a two-way street. Yeah, yeah. I, Anthony, your, your question. Well, I love what you said there because I'm, I'm hearing a theme. You know, it comes down to just there's been a lack of respect for authority. Yes. And it's interesting because if you notice the people who have gotten into power that you've voted for, they've completely disregarded the Constitution. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've disregarded the fundamental values that this country has been founded on by right. our forefathers. And like you said, You've watched it trickle down yes, yes. from top to the bottom. Mm-hmm. And this lack of respect has, I believe, too, has just played a massive part in people just not valuing the lives of others mm-hmm. and especially the value and, or valuing the lives of, of police officers who are there to literally help and assist yes. and de-escalate the situation. But now you've got people that are doing the opposite and coming in to provoke a situation and make it worse yeah you know and then you were talking about the fact how these cities that have you know effectively removed the budgets or defunded or completely cut out um, you know their emergency services or anything like that you know my question to those people is who are you literally going to call if you can't dial 911 to help for a situation mm-hmm. you know so I guess my question for you officer Herrick is, is this you know um, you mentioned reaching out to you but as a generation that's coming up, you know, we just, we're just coming off the midterms, you know, what can we do also as civilians to help further promote the need for police officers, for safety, public safety? What do you think there? That's a great question. Um, there's a generational gap here between us, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold your friends accountable. That's good. Hold your friends accountable. Why does the younger generation, it makes me sound old saying that, why, why do they get a... <laughs> like, sorry, bro. Man, yeah, you know. I, I can't believe I just said that. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome for that. <laughs> um, why does the young generation get a free pass to act a fool... Wow. Yes. ...and be disrespectful? Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. Yeah, we've criminalized cops and, like, promoted and uplifted and right. put on a pedestal real criminals. Right. It, that part makes no sense to me. Right. You know? I, you guys have been criminalized for no reason. Right. And it's very backwards. A, yeah. Any yeah, cop, it really is. Any cop who is worth their weight wants the bad cops gone. 
Mm -hmm. I don't want a guy to tarnish my badge. Mm -hmm. I worked very hard for that badge. Yeah. It took me years and years of work and dedication to get yeah. where I'm at now. Yeah. And the cops I know are the same way. I don't want corrupt officers there. I don't want bullies there. I don't want racists there. Mm -hmm. We want them gone too. Sure. Yes. But for the, again, for your generation, hold your friends accountable. Yeah. What you guys are doing now is amazing. You're 29 and 29. And, and, and some. Ish. <laughs> you know what you guys- Mid 30s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're 30 light, whatever. 30 light, there you um, go. <laughs> you guys, your platform is amazing, Matt, Anthony. Yeah. It, it, it's amazing to me because you face bold topics. Right. You know you're getting backlash. Mm -hmm. It's not the popular opinion. Yeah. We need more of it. Mm -hmm. So your guys' age group has got to call people out. Yeah. And if, it, if it's wrong, then we can address it as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. there, are, there are ways to correct a police officer's actions. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can file complaints. We wear body cameras. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, okay, that, 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 that gives me kind of <coughs> an example, me. right? Because people will label you guys as the bad guys, like I was just talking about. Right. And it's like, you have a body camera. Like, you know the actions, like, right. are accountable, like, when you're going into it. You're like trained on how to use that camera, yes. how to make sure that it is recording or showing the scene of what's going on. Right, it is second nature to activate that camera. Yes, like it, it should be like, it's like a muscle memory thing like to you now it at is. this point, okay? That's what I don't understand is like, but yet you guys get criminalized, you know, and, and messed with and uh, mm -hmm. labeled, I mean, there was a day there was honor to the badge. Right. There was a day where it was like a healthy respect, you know, as a, that's authority. You know, those are the people that we look up to. And I want to say this, like share an example, maybe, you know, you could combine stories or something like this, but like maybe an example of a time you said something about Jesus or witness to a criminal or a time where you were so disrespected by a criminal, but maybe you had a conversation with that criminal and changed his perspective on something. Maybe, you know, just share a story that you feel like people need to know about. This is why police officers are not bad people. This is why police officers care. Because, I mean, how many cops are gonna sit around and actually, you know, talk to a, a criminal and actually maybe give them some advice in life or talk to them about Jesus, you know? The ones that do that, man, they're like, they need to be like uplifted, man, as like the greatest people on this earth, you know? I, I mean, literally, like you deserve more respect. So, so touch on that real quick. I actually have two examples. One is for a mother and one's for a quote unquote criminal. Um, my, my former agency I worked at was a smaller agency. Mm -hmm. We responded to rescue calls with the squad and it was a, I think, eight month old child who was, wasn't breathing. So I drove as fast as I could possibly go to get there. Her name's Evelyn Gregg, I'll never forget it. I, I ran inside and I grabbed this baby and I started doing CPR on her. Mm. Now the, the baby, for lack of better terms, Matt, is the size of a football. Yeah, yeah. So I'm pumping her, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm pumping her on her chest. At the same time, her mom's on the phone, it was a daycare, her mom is screaming and crying in the background. Mm. So I was the mm. last person to see her daughter alive. The squad runs in and they grab the baby to take off. I never talked to Evelyn's mom ever again then I found out that her funeral was coming up. I didn't ask my chain of command. I didn't ask anyone to go. I put on my blues and I went there. I walked up, almost made it to the casket. And uh, Evelyn's mom and dad both broke down and gave me a hug. And they said, you're the last one to see my baby alive. Wow. And I thought, okay, this is a powerful moment. And I said to mom, I go, we both know where your daughter's at right now. She's with Jesus and she's waiting on all of us. Wow. And the, the dads don't cry we aren't allowed to cry right, and that dad broke down. Wow, wow. The criminal one, just a couple weeks ago, a young man, well, about 15 years old, got in a wow. fight at the hospital. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> An African-American male, and he fought the guards. I get there, and he wanted to argue with me. We argued back and forth. I put him in my car, I calmed him down, and we spoke like man to man. He called me a racist mm -hmm. multiple times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I asked him, I go, well, what race am I? This white said, no, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not white. I'm not Italian. I'm not, I'm, it's human race to me. Mm -hmm. We talked, and I, I can't tell his name on the air, but I said, yeah, get your life right. And I said, you can call me whenever you want. I gave my cell phone number, and he actually gave me a hug in front of his mom, and then wow. his mom smacked him. 
So. <laughs> and this was a this was a kid who was 15 who just fought three security guards at a hospital and is banned from there permanently. Mm -hmm. I could have just tossed him in my car and walked away, but I knew this kid was struggling. And lo and mm -hmm. behold, the problem was his baby had swallowed a button. Mm -hmm. He was at the hospital, and Nick, you were freaking out. So I showed a little compassion and accountability, and we actually bro-hugged it out. He probably lost his pride that day. He did. You know? He did. Because of that. He did. I mean, truthfully. It, it's hard. A, a young man mm -hmm. was, you know, controlled by three security guards. Yeah. But, again, compassion goes a long way. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not me. That, that, that is the Holy Spirit going through me, brother. Yeah. It's not me. Go ahead, Andrew. You know, I yeah. think part of the issue that we're seeing that's causing this divide between police officers and, uh, you know, the rest of society is the narrative that's been spun over the last, not just couple years, but the last several decades, where, to me, it felt like, well, it feels like they've tried to re- What's the word? They, they tried to resurrect the narrative of racism and segregation mm -hmm. from the 60s and the 50s. We had gotten past that, but all of a sudden you fast forward to 2020 and everyone's kind of shut in during the pandemic and for whatever reason, I guess the media is just bored. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we have this situation <laughs> mm -hmm. and now it's, oh, blacks against police again, you know? And we're talking about the 90s with Rodney King, and we're going back to the 60s and 50s and all these different things. And it's, fi it's finally, it, it's got to come to a point where I feel like, like you were saying, uh, Officer Herrick, we as a generation, as a society, we have to hold ourselves accountable. Are we going to believe this narrative? Or are we actually going to take matters into our own hands, yeah, yeah. be accountable for our actions, be accountable for the actions of others? But and let's start bringing in some unity and some peace. It's funny, everyone, regardless if you're on the left or the right, is, we're screaming for the same thing. Right. But the problem is the way that we're going about that. You know, you can't cause more division in hopes of bringing more unity. Everyone has to eventually yes. come together, but there's a certain level of respect that has to come. And, you know, in my opinion, just, again, as, as a, as a dark-skinned Christian, <laughs> <laughs> as, as a, seriously, as, as a black person, you know, it hurts my heart yeah. to see this narrative continue in the black community and police officers. It's just been over and over and over. And it's like at some point we have got to get past this. Right. And uh, I just have a really quick story to share. I was about eight years old. And so uh, the school that I went to, the elementary school I went to was uh, maybe a mile away. And uh, anyways, you take the bus to school. Um, that was back before Uber and, and Lyft. Uh, and I remember getting on the bus, and it was the wrong bus. Because there was like certain buses you had to take that sure. would take you to different neighborhoods. Right. And I ended up, well, as an eight-year-old, like across the world, but really it was just on the west side of Bellevue. Okay. <laughs> Instead of Which is the, a different world, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it really East is. East and West Bellevue is a different it's world. A, it's a different world. Yeah, and uh, when I got off the bus, you know, not realizing, I mean, I knew I was in Bellevue still, it was just pretty far away from home, but I remember kind of like running in a panic, and you know the first person I ran into, I decided to go to, was a police officer. Mm. And mm -hmm. uh, I was eight, so I was crying, I was bawling my eyes out, like, mm, I'm gonna get home, I'm at the wrong bus. <laughs> and the police officer's like, hey kid, no problem. He uh, lets me ride up front, mm -hmm. takes me right home with my parents. You know, and, and, and that, that memory has always stuck wow. with me. Yeah, it's stuck with me ever since. And I remember it to a T of just how nice and kind this guy was. And wow. for the sake of it, I mean, he was, he was, he was a white police officer, mm. but it didn't matter. Did you he care? saw a kid, right? right? No, nope. and I didn't care. Nope. I just want to get home. Yep. And I knew police officers, they help people. Yeah. And to this day, that's always stuck with me, um, you know, to now. And, and that's, I guess, my hope is for people to have that understanding. It's like, they're not, they're not the enemy. Officer no. Herrick's not your enemy. No. Um, you breaking the law, you're your own enemy. Right. That's a good statement. And there has to come a point where you've got to start holding yourself accountable and just be respectful of the fact that officers are just doing their job. Right. Yep. You know? Yep. So That's I just wanted to share that story, but, you know, it, it just hurts my heart, Matt, that we continuously yeah. see the same narrative and the same divide go yeah. over and over, and we keep taking the bait from the media. Yeah, agreed. And, you know, I know we got just a few short minutes left here, but... Um, you know, I, I just want to say from my heart that we're, you know, 
we're thankful. We have yes. Thanksgiving here in two days. We're thankful for people like you. Absolutely. Like, we we, we, we yes, absolutely sir. are thankful for people like you protecting our streets, protecting our cities so that families can enjoy Thanksgiving. Families can enjoy time together and we don't have to worry. That's why the whole defund the police thing is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, okay, yeah, take guns away, take police away. It's about the human heart. They will find a way to it's be true. criminals. Yes. That is the pure end of it because at the end of the day, Satan will find a way to infiltrate the minds of those that listen right. to Satan. Yeah, right. And we need cops. We need people to do the Lord's work of keeping things righteous, keeping things holy, keeping things at peace. Because there's a natural part of that that people don't talk about enough. Correct. So. Thank you for your service, your sacrifice. Thank you, sir. We need to get you on a, another episode again <laughs> at some point. And we just want to speak. Anthony, let's just pray a quick blessing sure. over him real quick. And just before we let you go, Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, for Officer Herrick. Lord, we thank yes. you, Lord, for his service, his sacrifice, Lord, to want to protect, Lord, people, Lord, in, in this city, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that he shall never have a hair of his head harmed, that he will never have to worry about it being his last night or anything like that, the last time that he, he kisses his son or his wife. No, we speak in protection of and, and blood of Jesus around him, a, a, a hedge of protection, a bloodline where nothing shall be harmed on his head. Nothing shall be harmed around him. Lord, we say angels go with him yes. while he protects people. Lord, we say you protect him with angelic hosts. Angels go forth now on his left, on his right, surround him, Lord. And everywhere he goes, we say he shall be at peace and protected in the name of Jesus and bless him, Father, for his sacrifice in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you for the unity that is coming between the police officers like Officer Herrick in the community and society. We thank you, Father, that you are restoring order through godly men and women like Officer yes. Herrick, Father. And we just declare now that things shift. Yes. Things shift. Things yes. shift in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Amen and amen. Well, bro. Yeah, one thank last you. thing for you, Manny. Yeah. Do you know why cops hug and love kids? Enlighten me. I think I, would, I, I could guess, okay. but I want, I want your answer. Because we leave our kids at home. Wow. wow. We leave our That's kids good. at home. Wow. And for mm. that brief moment, you, you might see your own child there. We leave our kids mm. at home, so that's why we hug kids. That, that's why I hug kids. That's why I love kids. That's why wow. I protect kids with my last breath. Because mm -hmm. I leave my kid at home, and that little kid is someone's son. Wow. Guys, you heard it right there. Officer Herrick joined us, took his time. Keep officers in your prayers and respect them each and every day. This is the two Mats and Anthony. Go change the game in your city. We'll see you soon. See ya.